Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm answering question number three from the October 2020 exam of the International A-Level Edexcel Pure Mathematics P2 paper. This question is about the trapezium rule and we are told that this is a sketch of part of the curve with the equation y equals log to the base 10 of x. I'm just going to write log x because that means log to the base 10 of x. When you write log something without the base it means base to the 10. The region R shown shaded in figure 1 is bounded by the curve and the line with the equation x equals 2 and the x-axis and the line with the equation x equals 14 using the trapezium rule for, with four strips of equal width show that the area of R is approximately 10.10. Okay so now we need to have um, to split this area into four separate strips, four separate trapeziums, and then um, use those trapeziums to approximate the area, approximate the area under this curve between these limits. So if we just imagine that we have four lines that we draw, well, actually we have to draw three lines here in order to split this into four strips, um, you'll see here that you've got these four trapezium shapes or approximately trapezium shapes. If we join the top of that to the top of that, you kind of can see that there's like approximately trapeziums. They're, they're not going to give the exact area, but there'll be something quite close to the area under the curve because, you know, they kind of approximate, approximately are trapeziums. Now, if I find the area of each of these trapeziums and add them together, I get the approximate area of this or under this curve for those limits so um, if you think about this let's let's say this is uh, y0 well let's say that this y value here the the height of this the, the height of this line which is going to be when you put x equals 2 into the equation is y0 so first before actually we go into that let's think about the the values here we've We've divided this, this up into equal strips. Now trapezium, the trapezium that we have like this, is made up of a distance between the parallel sides, which we call h, and the length of the parallel sides, which are called a and b. So the area of a, each individual trapezium will be h over 2 times a plus b. Now, the h is the distance between the parallel sides. Now, if we've taken this and split it into four equal widths okay there's four equal widths that distance 14 minus 2 divided by the number of strips that we have which is 4 that will tell you how wide each strip is going to be that's going to be 12 divided by 4 which is 3 so between here and here is 3 so that's going to be 5 and then 8 and then 11 that's equal width strips uh, each of them are three units long, or, uh, you know wide so that's the distance between the parallel sides. So that's the h. Now, the values of a and b, well, this, this is going to be the height of this line here, which will be what you get when you put x equals 2 into the equation. So let's call this y0, y1, y2, y3, and y4. Those will be the, the heights of each of those. And if we were going to find the, um, the, the area of each of these trapeziums, you're going to have... 3 over 2 times y0 plus y1. And then you'll have plus h over 2, which is going to be 3 over 2, times y1 plus y2. And then you're going to have 3 over 2 times y2 plus y3, and 3 over 2 um, times y3 plus y4, and you'll have the whole area. So if you think about all of that that we have written down, that gives us, if we take out the common factor, which is, h over 2. We're going to have, you see, we use y0 in this trapezium and y1 in both these trapeziums and y2 in both these trapeziums and y3 in both these trapeziums and y4 only in the last trapezium. So y0 and y4 are used just once. Okay, and the rest of them in between are used twice. So I'm going to do 2 times y1 plus y2 plus y3, all right, and that will give me the area of all of these trapeziums. Instead of doing them all separately, we can do it like in one, one go. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I know that this is the value of y when 
x is 2, x is 5, x is 11, x is so x is 8, x is 11, x is 14. Those are these heights. So what I'm going to do is I'll say the area of the trapezium. I can say the area of R is going to be 3 over 2 times. Now I'm going to have y, z, y um, 0, which will be log, log 2. Okay, so I have log... Um, Two, log to the base 10 of 2 and then the last one is log 14 so I have plus log 14 um, well not base 14 log of 14 the base is 10 remember we don't have to write that as I said plus 2 times and we're going to have the log of 5 8 and 11 so log of 5 plus the log of 8 plus the log of 11 so that's going to give us the area R. So if I put that into my calculator, that should be sufficient for us to get the marks. So I'm going to put 3 over 2. Then I'll put my bracket and I'll have log 2. So log 2. I don't have to put the base 10 because that means base 10. <clears throat> log 14. Those are the ones that I used once, the first and the last ones. And then everything else in between, I'll do two times those. So two times, log 5 plus log 8 plus 11. So I have log 5 plus log 8 plus log 11. Close the bracket once, um, once and twice. That gives me 10.1019. Let's leave it like that. So R is going to be 10.10 um, square units, you can say. And so we've shown that R equals 10.1. And there's the answer to part A. Simple as that. Now part B says, explain how the trapezium rule could be used to obtain a more accurate estimate for the area of R. Now, if we were to increase the number of strips, if we had more strips, okay, just increase them, then the kind of these these gaps here that are, exist will get smaller and smaller. So if I made more strips here, then the gap which is underneath the curve in this case, between the tree, top of the trees and the curve, will get less and less, and the, and the accuracy of the area will get greater and greater so we could say it's just worth one mark we can just say increasing the number of trapeziums increasing the number of strips that would be how you can make this more accurate increasing the number of strips and that's fine that's that's the answer to part b and now for part c of this question here we have um to answer or using the answer to part A and making your method clear, estimate the value of this. So of course, we can't just stick this in our calculator and get an answer, uh, which is possible, but they want us to use our understanding of logarithms, basically, and how to split this up in a way such that we will use our answer from part A. Now, our answer from part A, basically, once we split this area up into these strips we this was the graph of y equals log to the base 10 of x and what we found here is basically if you can think about it in terms of integration what we found here is the integral between 2 and 14 of log to the base 10 of x with respect to x that's what we found here and we found that that's approximately 10.10 Approximately, not exactly, approximately, because we use the trapezium rule, which is an approximation. We didn't actually integrate this, but that's an approximate value for the integral of this. Now, what we need to do to estimate the value of this, this integral here, if we can express log to the base 10 of the square root of x in terms of log to the base 10x, then that would help us to find or to estimate the area of this, because we can use this this 
this value that we have from the previous part of the question. So if we use the laws of logarithm, this is going to be log to the base 10 of x to the power of a half. We can say log to the base 10 of root x is the same as log to the base 10 of x to the power of a half, which is the same as a half times log to the base 10 x. We don't actually have to write the 10 here. You can just put log x like I did in part a, but <clears throat> no, no difference, it doesn't matter. Make a difference if I do or don't. So a half times log to the base 10 x. So I can rewrite this integral, which is the integral between 14 and two of log to the base 10 of the square root of x with respect to x. I can rewrite it as a half times the integral between two and 14 of <clears throat> log to the base 10 of x. Okay, and I already know what that is, it's 10.10. .10. So it's a half of 10.10, .10, which is 5.05. .05. So there is my that square units. There is the answer to part C part one. Okay, just using the laws of logarithms. Okay, um, to write that in a simpler form. Now part two is very similar, okay, except we have this, which I'm going to now split up into separate logarithms such that I'm going to have this left somewhere, which I can deal with. So I can write this as, first of all, let's just take log to the base 10 of 100 times x cubed. I can rewrite this as log to the base 10 of 100 plus log to the base 10 of x cubed using the the law of multiplication this is like a product 100 um, times x cubed so i can write it as log to the base 10 of one product plus log to the same base of the other product now log to the base 10 of 100 is equal to 2 because 10 squared is equal to 100 right 10 to the base power of 2 is 100 so that's 2 and this is plus and i can use the power law 3 log to the base 10 of x so i've done Again, I've expressed this on its own in such a way I can use it. So what we can say here is this expression is equivalent to writing 14 to 2 of 2 plus um, 3 log to the base 10 of x dx. It's equivalent to this. Okay, just splitting it up in this form, we end up with that expression. And now we can use... This, I can split it up into two, th two separate integrals. So I have 14 to 2 of 2 with respect to x, plus I can say 3 times the integral between 14 and 2 of log to the base 10 of x with respect to x. Now, this part I already know is 10.10. .10. Okay, we know that this part is 10.10, .10, or approximately 10.10. .10. Okay, I can integrate 2 with respect to x. That's something I can do. That'll give me 2x, and I have the limits of 14 and 2, plus 3 times, and this is going to be 10.10. So now I'm going to have um, 14 into 2 into x. If I put 14 into the x, that's 2 times 14, which is 28, minus, and I put 2 instead of the x, I'll 2 times 2, which is 4, and that's plus 30.30. So that's 24. Okay, so that's going to give me 24 plus 30.30, which gives me 54.30 square units. And there we have the answer to part C, part 2. And that concludes question number 3 from this paper of October 2021. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found on the <coughs> playlist that you, you should see somewhere in this area. Other questions from... Um, integration um, from P2 can be found here because this is like linked to integration. This this topic is in integration chapter. Uh, other questions from the topic of logarithms, I'll also include that because we're using the laws of logarithms, will be in the playlist that should be found in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.